Hello everybody and welcome to part two of repairing a balsa model and as I said last time one of the key things to do is to make sure that you've got all the bits from the site where the plane has made contact with the ground and Roy did that and he's got the bits and pieces in the um, little spare tub away here the first thing I'm going to do is actually to remove this covering so I can see what's going on underneath where the breaks are where the cracks are uh, and what needs to be done so with that in mind I'm going to put us under a little bit of a time lapse and I'm going to remove the covering from here and also from the rear section up to the main cabin area so we can see what issues we're going to be facing so here goes So here we have it. I've removed um, the covering so we can see what we're dealing with. And there are a few parts that have come adrift. It was only the covering holding them in place. Persistent bits of covering, if you want to ever remove them for perhaps you want to change a colour scheme on a model that you've picked up and you want to uh, make it your own. If you have persistent... Um, paint that's peeled off with the covering one of the things you can do is apply a little bit of heat to it and then I'm going to use some masking tape uh, some packaging tape to pull off the paint let's see how we'll go on and you can see there it pulls the paint off because there's more stick on this than there is on the actual um, foil paint. I'm not too bothered actually in this case because I'm going to apply the same colour scheme and the same pattern as Roy had on his. It's just by way of demonstrating what you can do. Bit of heat. Put the tape on. I'm using the same strip again and again here and it's lifting off. Just got to be persistent. And you can see there that it's lifting the paint off. Right, back to what we're doing. So, I have some bits and pieces here that came adrift. There are some parts missing. Now some of it I can glue back in place. Other parts, it would be better to cut out and put a new piece in. So let's start off with what can fit in first. Let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. So there's a part there. Let's get that whacked in. I'll apply some glue to the centre part. And then I'll go around the edge and get the, the super glue, glue to wick into the joint. So apply some into the joint. And once you've done this, I think you actually end up with the joint being stronger than the wood that's near to it. There's a piece there flapping about. So let's get that reunited with the part that it belongs to flipping it into the crack here pushing it down and then applying the glue along the joint that's come adrift That's that in place. It's worth pulling it about and seeing if anything's moving. No, that's solid. Right. This part, can we add this? Yep, yeah, that goes on there. 
apply plenty of super glue. If you're a bit concerned about using this, there are alternatives. It's not the healthiest adhesive in terms of the fumes, and I would always suggest that you have you're not in a very confined space when you're using it. Ask me how I know. Yeah, we've all done it. There you go. That's glued on now. This piece, I believe, belongs in here somewhere. But there's some missing. So what I'm going to do is cut a clean break here and put a new piece in and shape that. But that's solid. Now, this mount has come loose. And I'm not surprised it's come loose. It's only held in with a little bit of epoxy here and a bit of epoxy there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reinforce. Sorry, I'm not sure you could say that. So this has come loose and there you go. As I was saying, the epoxy was a bit dabba dabba here and a dabba dabba there. Flintstones building. Yabba dabba do. So I'm going to use this to locate where it should go to. However, I'm going to put some reinforcement on the other side. And I think that really it should have had some side thrust added to it. I'm going to double check that from the plans. Because that doesn't look like it's got any side thrust applied. That's it in the correct position. But it's not, not glued there. So, I think it would be easier if I had a look at the plans and double checked that Roy's built this correctly in the first place. I'm sure he has. But it's worth checking now before I go any further. So that bit it, itself is quite, uh, quite solid. Well, the plans weren't a great deal of help. Although it is a... Uh, um, an electric conversion of a classic design uh, it goes back some because it's for a brushed motor geared motor and there's no side thrust or down thrust indicated so what I'm going to do I think I'm going to remove the motor from here because it'll make it easier to handle get the bulkhead glued in I'll need to apply some pressure to clamp the sides in I'll use epoxy to do that and as I said I'm going to reinforce with some balsa triangular pieces on the inside there. Then I've got an idea of how I'm going to mate these two sides up. But the, the next job is to actually cut back to some solid here. And what I've done is I've actually ironed down the covering to the cross members. It just gives a little bit more strength to the structure especially when it's been messed about with as I'm going to now so let's just cut back to solid pull those doubles out we don't need them at the minute there we go I'm going to take it right the way back here. So basically what I'm going to be doing is making a middle section. A new middle section for this plane. I think the glazing has seen better days, but let's... Uh, I think it's only the covering holding some of these parts on. Somebody commented that what they do is when they've had a mishap is rather than dive straight in and look at it or make rash decisions such as 
This is going into the bin or the trash can if you live across the pond. Give yourself a little bit of calming down period before you jump in. I know I've got a model sitting under the stairs in a state of disarray that I think is just too good to throw away and it's well capable of being restored. It's just a case of well, I have the time to do it, um, but I will do. Here we are, we're getting back to some solid material here. Well, that's glued in well. Not. off well, well let's give up the ghost that's no but worry okay there we go now I lay in that on Just stop it pulling away. There we go. Right, so that's what we've got. Now I know I've said that I have to glue the bulkhead in, but let's just see how close we are to having any sort of structure at all left on this thing. So, well, there's, a, there's the brake. I'm sure that would hold not. So it's going to have to be reinforced and I have an idea of how I'm going to do that. Simple thing would be to replace these stringers and put some splices in, which I can do. But I know that this model requires quite a bit of lead in the nose. So I can afford to put a little bit of weight back from the CG and not suffer too much. So I've got a plan for that. Pause it here while I glue the bulkhead in and then we'll come back to what I'm proposing to do to put the two halves of this model back together. This is the plan of action then. The bulkhead's been uh, glued back in with the motor on it and that's setting at the moment with epoxy and reinforced and balsa strips at the rear. To actually splice the rear of the fuselage with the front part of the fuselage, this is what I propose doing. This is the damaged area here, and of course the cabin's all gone as well, that's something else I'll deal with in a moment. But what I want to do is get these two halves together, and I'm going to use this 1 16th ply to create a doubler for the inside on both sides and that will give me something to actually attach the stringers to and then I'll possibly double them up on the inside as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is transfer this shape with the cutouts for the um, servo bearers and I'll actually step it in slightly. Anyway I'll cut them out and then I'll show you what they're going to look like. And here we have the plan. I've made two reinforcing um, plywood templates here to go in. They weigh a total of 25 grams. If anybody asks, I'm sure somebody will. Uh, negligible weight in a model of this size, especially where it is. Um, it's just a tad rear of the CG. It's got to be done anyway, so I have to go on. So this is how it's going to fit in. It's a little bit tight, which is the way I want it to be. So that will be glued on thus, thusly. And this one, nice tight fit, will be glued on like that. And then that gives me something to attach the stringers too and I'm going to actually double them up um, on the inside 
and the idea of this is it'll give it the strength but when it's covered you'll still see the positions of the stringers without this I'll get that glued in place and then we'll crack on it's time to marry the two together now the glue's just about gone off on this section so we have a break here and a break here what I'm going to do well what I have done rather is I've got it in this position because it's enabled me to line up that the the rear part of the fuselage isn't twisting one way or the other now I've got that lined up and what I'm going to do is apply some glue to the stringers and the diagonals so that it holds it in position and then once that's done I can start thinking about how I'm going to add some structural strength by doubling up stringers on the inside of both sides the other side's far more damaged than this let's get this held in place and because I've got it where I want it this thin CA comes into its own uh, I wouldn't want to do this all with white glue simply because there's more chance of it moving and going places I don't want it to go which is always a danger when you're jigging things up so I'm applying some CA this is more by me more to really just hold it where I want it and then I have actually got some Gorilla Glue that I'm going to paint along the edges once I'm happy it's glued in so these applicators are great by the way a hundred for less than five pounds the last ages so that's that side that's that side glued now there's a lot more damage to the other side but there's still enough to hold everything in place until I add some strengtheners to it I will be adding all the diagonals that are missing and the advantage of doing it like this is that once it's covered you won't be able to see you'll see the impressions of where the the structure was and you won't actually see the internals now that should be held there's only one way to find out isn't there and that's by removing the clamps here it goes and I'm happy with that that's nice and square so what I'm going to do is I'll cut a splice joint in there and complete that stringer on the outside the vertical one the cross ones and then what I'm intending on doing is actually adding a stringer on the inside all the way across I'll have to step it there obviously to actually help pull these together maybe put a gusset or two triangular gussets in the bottom to add strength I'll tidy these up and then you can come back and see how I'm getting on with it well there you have her I'm calling this part of the video um, video 2 on the balsa repair done um, I'm very pleased with that it's extremely strong it's rigid there's no twist in it I've eyed it up and to my eyes at least it's square which is all I can ask for really considering the state it was in I've added gussets here and here 
I haven't added any extra longerings in. I don't think they're necessary. I haven't felt what it, it actually feels like in your hands. Um, this side, it's had an extra upright added in that went the journey and there. And I've added one extra brace across here. Um, obviously, it'll all need sanding down and cleaning up. In the next part of the rebuild, what I intend doing... Whoops. Do you want to add to the repairs? What I intend doing is adding the cabin area. And as that seats the wing, it's important that it's strong. And I'll go about and add some additional gusseting that actually wasn't on the original drawing when I've looked at it. So it obviously wasn't on the build when Roy did it, but I think it's really essential, um, given that the, the models had a hard landing as well, that we get this nice and strong and square with the tail area. So I hope that's been informative to you. Um, that's added 25 grams to the weight. Uh, and as I said before, because it needs weight in the nose anyway, I don't think that's a big deal. So thanks for watching. If you haven't already done so, would you please subscribe? And if you give it a thumbs up, it helps share with others who've got a similar interest. Thanks for watching now.